Welcome to Minehead and the final of Britain's Strongest Man. For the last week, this quiet seaside town has reverberated to the thunder of 20 of Britain's mightiest athletes. This sport is steeped in history, and this particular competition is one of the oldest in existence. Some would have first seen this in black and white. Now it's in widescreen LCD colour. But one thing remains the same. The challenge to find who is Britain's strongest man. Eight men will fight for that title. World's strongest man finalist, Mark Felix. The Midlands strongest man, Lawrence Shahley. The current holder of England's strongest man title, Jimmy Marku. The North of England's strongest man, Mark Westerby. Scotland's strongest man, Chris Innes. Possibly the favourite for the title from Kent, Terry Hollands. From North Yorkshire, Darren Sadler. And the South of England's strongest man, Jay Hughes. Well, we're down at the harbour side now in Minehead and it's time for the action to begin. We've seen this event before, it's the Farmer's Walk, but this being the final, there are bound to be some changes. I'm here with Sven Carlson, former World's Strongest Man. He's been our referee throughout the event. You've heard his voice, Sven. What changes can we expect to see in this event? Well, the big change now is that it's a speed event. So the guys have to take these 125 kilo babies all the way down the course and up again as fast as possible. But they have to watch their steps because with two big steps, they tend to be a little bit wobbly. So I think it's going to be exciting. It will be. We'll see how these guys cope with these babies. <laughs> Yes, and it's all about speed now. There's the 50 metre course, 25 up, 25 back. You've just got to take those two 125 kilogram anvils, one in each hand so the grip is vital, and just blast your way up and back. Well, Jay Hughes in the yellow, he managed his 50 metres in 28.56. Jimmy Marku, 23.89, he really flew. Of England, Lawrence Charlet. Next up, Lawrence Charlet from Stroud and in Gloucestershire. From Scotland, Chris Innes. And the man they call Goose, Chris ah. Innes, from north of Scotland. They're up next on the Farmer's Walk. Take your grip. Eight men in the final. All of them belong there as well. And it's Charlet. The Midlands' strongest man that really has set off on a flyer, and Goose is really struggling at the moment. Well, Charlet's rocking and rolling, but rocking all over the place is Chris Innes. Charlet's starting to struggle. Always oh, in big trouble. But the winning post is in sight. He's got to pick himself up. The time is still going to be decent, but it could have been so much better for him. And here comes Innes. Oh, Charlet will be kicking himself. It's still not a bad time, but what could it have been? Well, I think it would have been faster than Marcus there. He just clipped his leg with one of the weights, and that's what happens. Too fast, and you'll go over. Wow, what could he have done? Darren Sadler in action in the next heat, and he's being uh, watched by this man here, Ollie Thompson, his good mate. Thompson, of course, the defending champion here, but he can't come back to defend his From title England, because of an injury. Mark Westerby. And uh, it's Mark Westerby that's going up against Darren Sadler, also and something England, of a story Darren about Sadler. Westerby that he's picked up something of an injury after his heat. Well, I picked this injury up uh, doing the fingers, fingers. Uh, as you know, I did all five fingers. The very last one, reach out and hammered it down to try and save a few seconds. And uh, I just must have severed a nerve at the back of my neck. Yeah, I'm pretty certain if there's no pain, you know, I'll be OK. I'll just go out there and do what I have to do. Yeah, I'm getting on, I'm 42, but there's a bit of life in me yet, and I'm, I'm hoping to surprise one or two people, you know. I haven't really peaked as yet, I'm, I'm certain I haven't peaked. Um, I'm sure I've got a good few years left back in me, yeah. Take your grip! Well, it's uh, an unofficial battle of the north of England, this one as well, isn't it? A real little and large show. 6'5 versus 5'9, and it's the little man, the pocket rocket, that's gone off to the fast start, but here comes Westerby, right behind him. Good control, good pace. And Westerby's just got a little step here, but here comes 
the pocket rocket back again, but West will be holding off. This is like a five furlong sprint at Ascot, this one, and it's the older fella that takes it. Mark West to be 22.91. Injury, what injury? What a time there by Westerby. He was second to the turn, but his power, his raw power, is what saw him through there. Sadler, though, should be happy with that. He was very quick. Well, Mark, puffing hard after that. Tough one. How's the uh, shoulder holding up after that? Surprisingly quite well. Not a bad event for it, really. Arm straight. It's more be a different story, though. Two of the favourites for this title. Terry, Terry Hollands, Holland. the big man, the world finalist. And also from England, And Mark his fellow Felix. world finalist, Mark Felix. Well, this really is a clash of the titans. Take your grip! And there's a slight risk when you go in head-to-head -head competition like this that you actually go too fast for yourself. But look at them, neck and neck. Just like in the last heat, Felix is in danger of drifting out of his lane. And he's got himself together and a much better turn as well. That's bought him a good metre or so. Holland's trying to close the gap. These times are going to be fast. It's neck and neck. Oh, what on earth's happened to Felix there? Those anvils have got across that line. And Felix lost a few seconds there, definitely. Holland's crossed the line. Felix did not. What a misjudgment. What a moment of madness. Felix dived for the line with 250 kilos and misjudged it. He had to do a second movement there to get it over. Well, Terry, we knew it was going to be close between you and Mark, but that was agonisingly close. Yeah, um, I was worried about making a mistake. He got the, the lead on me coming back. Um, luckily, I just managed to keep up with him, catch him towards the line. I just literally clung, clung on to those, kept it together. I was getting really ragged towards the end, but I'm pleased with the win. Amazing drama in the very first event. Terry Hollands takes all eight points, but it's Mark Felix's dive for the line that people will remember. That mistake pushes him down to fifth. More fireworks after the break. Now for the next event, we've moved down to the harbour here in Minehead, where the athletes are going to have to move this car 20 metres down the track. Now they're not going to drive it, they're going to carry it. The wind's picked up, but that shouldn't be a problem. This weighs in at 400 kilos. The problem is, can they keep the balance of this car and not throw themselves off course? Only three athletes have previous experience of this event, Darren Sadler, Terry Hollands and Mark Felix. For the others, it's a step into the unknown. Let's see how they get on. And balance, absolutely the key. No balance at all for Jay Hughes. Didn't even make eight metres as that car rocked and rolled. Chris Innes also had trouble with balance. He made 13.2. Laurent Charlet, 16 metres. Nobody getting close to finishing the course. And even big Mark Westerby down at 14.3. Please welcome our next athlete. So, four athletes down. And still nobody's finished the course. Experience so vital here, it really is a, a difficult job just to keep this car balanced. If you've got balance, you've got a chance. Here's Jimmy Marku. Let's see what he can do. Well, this West London man, former Albanian, doesn't have any kit to train on, and I think that's what makes his charge through the heats even more impressive. And look at this charge here. He's going to go past 16 metres. He could well be the first man to finish the course. Yeah, this really is a tremendous effort from Marku. Look at the control he's got on that car. It's starting to shuffle around a little bit now. But that is not bad at all. 31.01. The first man to complete the course. He always has a smile on his face, doesn't he? Now he's got reason to smile. Well, it was a bit of a stuttery start there, but once he got the rhythm, once he got the feeling of how to carry the weight, no stopping him. Jimmy. Well done. You can see how delighted you are. First person to complete the course. Yeah. I've never done it in my life. And I always like to have a go. Feels all right. Slow steps, but no problem at all. Well, Darren Sadler has some experience. And the world's strongest man. Ready? I'm trying to work this car thing. Ready. I'm nearly five foot nine. 
Well, half the battle is lifting it off the ground in the first place. And as you see, he's got control issues already. And there's no elevation there. There's no height. Nothing for him to play with. Those wheels can bounce off the road. And that just makes the balance even worse. And he's struggling. It really is. I mean, this is quite an effort from Darren just to get that far. You could see he never had control of this car. And he's never got the height just to get it up off the road. As soon as one of those wheels hits, it goes all over the place. It's a good effort. A very good effort. He's not going to beat Jimmy Marku, but he's got a chance to complete the course. I think he will do. Oh, he does. Drives it forward there. Determination got that over the line. Darren Sadler's not one for giving up. But you're right, perhaps he didn't have quite enough clearance of the car from the ground. And once those rubber tyres stick, they, the car just stops. Well, here's Terry Hollands. Once upon a time, he was a rugby player. Never quite managed to play for England, but of course, uh, we know someone who did. Well, Terry, I bet your days with Harlequins under 21 seem a long, long time ago. Yeah, um, they do now, but um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm glad I gave up and made the decision to give up the rugby and start a strong man. It seems to fit me a lot better as a sport, so yeah. You don't miss it at all? Um, every now and then, but yeah, like I said, I mean, I prefer training for this and it fits me a lot better, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Oh well, yeah, I mean, you're now one of the world's top strongmen, so uh, we can probably get rid of this. Um, you're through to the final here for Britain's Strongest Man. You happy with the way you got to the finals? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I couldn't have asked for any more, really. I won every event getting through the heat, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how it all went, and I'm happy with all my times and performances. Now, there are a couple of moments, you know, in the farmer's walk, you gave a big smile as you were doing it. Yep. The Fingal's fingers, you look really strong on. Are you happy with the message you're giving out to the other athletes? Yeah, I mean, um, the Fingal's fingers, oh, that's one performance I'm really happy with. It's my best time I've, on those that I've ever done. Um, yeah, I mean, that, the Stones as well, also was really pleased with my time, really pleased with my performance. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it went, to be honest. So that's all in the past now. That's the heat's done and dusted. Those performances, nice to look back on, but... The finals, what it's all about. Yeah. Can you stay at that level or are you going to have to up it for the finals? Um, I think I'll need to up it a bit. Um, obviously, guys are going to come out all guns blazing. Um, I, I mean, I've got a good chance of winning it and hopefully I can, I can pull it off. Who do you see as your threats, though, amongst that group? Because there are a few surprises. There's some old names in expect, but there are a few, few surprises as well. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think personally, I think all the group winners are really going to be really tough to beat. Um, Mark Westerby. Mark Felix, Darren Sadler, they're all going to be really tough to beat. Also, Jimmy Mark, who looked really strong in his group as well. Um, yeah, like I said, it's going to be tough, but I think I can pull it off. Well, at six foot six, Ready? Terry Hollands isn't going to have getting any trouble at all getting that car clear. What he's got to do is get it under control and get it balanced. Remember, Jimmy Mark, who leads the field, 31.01. That's the time he's got to look at Hollands. A little stumble and a wobble there, but look at the control he's got on this car, and Marku's time is in big, big danger here. Still got 10 seconds to go, and he's going to shatter it. Look at that. Whoa, 22.61. This man still doesn't know what it's like to lose. At 200 kilos body weight, this car is only twice his weight, and he has just such a big frame, he can handle these kind of weights. Well, nice to know he's human. Well, Mark, you saw what Terry had to do. You know the target you've got to reach. But did, uh, when Terry was doing his, I've not a look. I don't know what time he do. I don't know whether I finished it or not. And when he was doing it, my back was totally turned. I just blocked out everything. Now it's all about me. Well, we'll leave you to it. Good luck. Thank you. Well, after that moment of madness, he's, he's got some catching From up England, to do. Mark, Mark Felix. Felix. And it's uh, not really an event that you'd think he'd beat Terry Hollands in. And you look at Holland's time of 22.61. That's going to take some catching here. Balance and control important. Well, he's off to a good start. I think you'd have to be a real optimist to think he could beat Terry Hollands in this kind of event. But this is a good start. Oh, he's flying. He's flying, Colin. He's got every chance. If he doesn't put that car down, he is going to beat Hollands. Look at this time. That is absolutely sensational from Mark Felix. And he is right back in business here now. I can't believe this, Nick. The results are topsy-turvy as to what they should be. Hollands wins Farmer's Walk, and now Felix blows everyone away in the car walk. He will be so happy with this, and it shows he's not a choker. He's here to stay. Well, Mark, you said you were going to do it, and you did it. Yes, I deliver. I didn't fall. I just deliver. This was all about me. 
I needed to do this. Did you feel as you were coming down, you had it under control all the way through? I did uh, down control all the way through. You know, it was very good. I had a real balance. Yeah, it was very good for me. Does that get you back in shape for the final? Yeah, he's back in shape. Um, I'm fitter than ever. I'm just ready. Well done. Yeah! Well, this is shaping up into a classic battle between the top two. A seemingly unbeatable time from Terry Holland was just obliterated by Felix. Holland is still in the driving seat, though. Felix missed out on the title last year. He's desperate to make amends. Jimmy Marku will be well pleased with joint third. Well, that win for Mark Felix would have given his confidence an enormous boost and shown everyone else that he's not out of this competition yet. The next event is the deadlift, and this is one where he excels. He's proven on the world stage that he can live with the best, but can he bring that form to Britain's strongest man? We'll have to wait and see the event taking place next, just behind me. Yeah, since the deadlift, they start off lifting five barrels, and then they just keep dropping another barrel in so that the weight just goes up and up from 230 to 315. Chris Innes managed three reps before he said enough was enough. Jay Hughes, similarly, three reps in a time of 25.41. Good experience for these younger men. Lawrence Charlet, four reps. Very impressive from him. Darren Sadler getting up to five. Mark England, Westerby. Mark Westerby! With a shoulder problem that so far Hasn't been much of a problem for him, has it? But let's see how he does Take on the deadlift. Lift! Well, the grip is absolutely vital, of course. Go! Go go, it seems for that reverse grip. And in comes barrel number one, so here's rep number two. Go! No problems there for Westerby. That's a big total from Darren Sadler. Five reps will be hard to beat. Westerby will have to be on his game here, and that was already a slight struggle, humping the back on the way up with rep number three. The fourth barrel is in. Well, the third barrel is in, should I say, the fourth rep. This is it. Can he do it? Big extra effort. He needs it. He needs it to get ahead of some of the uh, also rounds in this field. He got four, but on that evidence, five is going to be beyond him. Well, it doesn't look very yeah, likely. Yeah, he knew. He knew. <laughs> He's off. <laughs> no question about it. Everything went into lift four. Still, his uh, four reps were pretty solid. Oh, he can be pleased with that. Despite the injury, way. he's still in there fighting. From England, Jimmy Marku. There's Jimmy Marku just tucked in behind the uh, big two, Holland and Felix. Just getting a shot of the old smelling salts there. Just to clear the passages. Mind Take you, a few deadlifts will clear your passages as well. We've seen uh, we've seen some blood vessels in the nose get burst. Good fellas doing this. He's a good deadlifter. In fact, he's a good all-round strong man, isn't he? Those are two very fast reps. Here comes rep number three. Well, he was the only man in the heats to finish all of the squats. This is the first time we've seen his deadlifting ability. And number four flies up. This is great stuff. Very fast time as well, but can he challenge Sadler? No! He's a... No, he dropped it. You left your hands go Yeah, on. he dropped it. That won't count, so he's got to do it again, and with all that momentum gone, I'm not sure he's going to do this again, but they're giving him every encouragement here, the crowd. Can he make five? Yes, he did. That was a sensational effort from Jimmy Marku. But enough is enough. That is such a shame. It's a tough call from Sven Carlson, the head referee and former world's strongest man, but it's the right decision. There's no question about that. You cannot drop it. Sven, we can see you getting ready for the next competitor, but Jimmy Marku walked away looking very, very upset with that. What's the story? Well, the rule says clearly that you have to follow the bar till the machine is completely on the ground again. And he let go with halfway down. And these guys, are they fully aware of all these rules? Well, they should pay attention to the rule meeting and they have it in the written as well. It's tough on them though, isn't it? It is, but that's the name of the game. You're a harsh man. Yeah. <laughs> Please welcome our next athlete. Well, here's a man that I'm sure knows the rules, Mark Felix. 
It's very tough in a field like this to make a mistake and still come back Take your grip. and expect to win the competition. Felix made his mistake Lift. in the farmer's walk. He is a very good lifter. He's a fast lifter as well. And Darren Sadler's five reps will certainly be under threat here. Two have just gone by with no problem at all and make that three. He'll be relishing the opportunity to go before Terry Holland's here and say, hey, no problem, all six lifts. And he looks good for it. Here goes number five. Five goes the way of all the others now. Can he make it six and in a fast time as well? He really does need to beat Holland's in this event to keep himself in the mix. And that is absolutely sensational stuff from Mark Felix. And he loves it. And the way he held on to the bar at the end of that sixth rep reminds me of Terry Hollands in his heat when he held on to his farmer's walk and looked over and smiled at Mark Felix. Well, how roles have reversed. Felix has thrown down the gauntlet here. Some of the lads from uh, Terry Holland's rugby club. Not sure what the uh, moustaches are made of. They look like Merv Hughes, the old Australian fast bowler. From England, Terry Holland. Well, Terry Holland's knows the deal. He's got to get all six, and he's got to do it in under 36 seconds. Otherwise, Let's Mark Felix it. will have closed the gap. Lift. Let's see what he does. Go. It's get all six and get him in a fast time. That's a very, very big ask. Well, normally I would say no way, but after the roles have been reversed and the farmers walk and uh, car walk, who knows what could happen here? Yes, yeah, expect the unexpected in Britain's strongest man this year. Terry's flying. His rep five. Oh, he slowed. He slowed. That might prove to be a difference maker. Well, at least it guarantees him second spot. I don't think he's going to take Felix. No, he isn't. A fast time. A very fast time indeed. I think that's what he went for. The Murph Hughes boys love it. Well, I think Terry did just about as well as he could do there. Five reps quicker than anybody else. Good enough for second. He'll be happy. Well, Terry Holland's three events down. You're still in the lead, but are you feeling Mark Felix just breathing down the back of your neck? Uh, maybe a little. Um... Uh, I expected to lose this one, to be honest. I expected to lose the deadlift to Mark. I knew there was no way that I could really beat him. All I was hoping for was to finish second, which was what happened. I mean, he came out with an absolutely blistering time on the car walk as well, which I didn't expect. I expected to beat him on that one, but, um, yeah, I'm still in the lead and I'm, I'm confident with the next three events. You're relishing the competition that he's giving you because after that first event, the farmer's walk, you're well ahead of him. Yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew it would be close coming into the competition between me and Mark. Um, but like I said, I know I've got three good events to come and hopefully I can pip him on those. Another win for Mark Felix really turns up the pressure on Holland. Darren Sadler's experience is beginning to show, but that mistake from Mark who could cost him dear. Felix is just two points behind Holland and will feel that he's in with a chance of making up for last year's disappointment. Sadler and Marku are locked in an exciting battle for third. The competition is really hotting up. The next test for these athletes is the 400 kilo tyre flip. All the action coming up after the break. Welcome back to Minehead and the final of Britain's Strongest Man. It's a real two-horse race, this Terry Holland and Mark Felix setting a blistering pace, just as they did in the first heat, the farmer's walk. That was the mistake from Felix that let Holland jump out into the early lead. Felix would finish fifth overall. He's been making up ground ever since, though, winning the car lift in sensational style. That was a surprise, but what wasn't a surprise was Mark Felix then going on and winning the deadlift as well, so he's reducing that deficit as we go on to event number four. It's the tire flip. You've got to move those tires down a 20 meter course within 75 seconds. Fastest time wins is Martin and Sven. Now in the time it's taken us to move from the harbour wall back down here to the seafront, the weather's been playing its usual tricks. We've had a bit of rain, the track's a little bit wet. Fortunately for the athletes, these are wet weather tires. Sven, these tires look enormous. How much is the weather going to affect these guys as they try to move them down the track? Well, it's drying up very fast you now, so I don't think it's going to make a difference whatsoever. And the guys are strong, and this is 400 kilo tires, now we're going to test their explosive powers. 
Now, it's very, very tight at the top of the leaderboard. How much now is it going to be a matter of mental strength over physical strength? Now, with this last event, it's really a mental game, Martin. Well, you'd struggle to get one of these in the boot of your car. Let's see how the athletes handle them. Well, the two youngsters went off really fast in the first heat. Jay Hughes in yellow, 34.76. What about Chris Innes, 33.08. That was fast. Heat two, Mark Westerby managed 36.07. But drama as Laurent Charlet tore a bicep. His competition is over. Lawrence, um, you pulled up immediately as you started to lift that tyre. What did you feel? Uh, I just heard a rip in my, my bicep. It's completely torn off, I think. It's, I've never done it before, but... It's one of those things. <laughs> well, it goes without saying that you must be absolutely gutted. You were doing so well in the tournament, but that's got to be it, hasn't it? That's it for me, yeah. I can't, I can't see myself being able to compete with a torn bicep. Not the next few events we've got. Got Atlas Stones, there's no chance on that. Log lift, I won't be able to even clean it, I don't think. So, like you said, absolutely gutted. Well, if it's any consolation, you've been a revelation in this tournament, so we wish you the best with it, the uh, repair of your arm. Cheers, thanks very much. Thank you. Yes, that's the last we'll see of Lawrence for this year, but what a future he has ahead of him. But back to the competition Jimmy and this Marcus. unofficial battle for third place here. The ever-smiling Jimmy Marku goes up against England, his closest Darren rival, the man Sadler. currently in third place, Darren Sadler. And they're probably taking a look at the uh, leaderboard here and thinking, 33 seconds, that's fast. Yes, I think that's really fast. Chris Innes Ready. has proven once again what a great athlete he is. A tough benchmark for the others. And you can't make any mistakes. Jimmy's already stumbled there trying to find a grip on these giant tyres. Yes, 33.08 is the time to beat. Jimmy's starting to get it back together again. And that's just brought a response from Darren, who's also starting to push it a little bit. And the clock keeps ticking. And they're both starting to suffer. And that fast time looks like standing up. I don't think these two are going to challenge it. But who's going to edge it here? Well, it looks like Jimmy might just have got in front again. One more turn will do it, and Marku will take third. And that's good enough as well for Darren. Referee Jim Pollock saying, no, you've done enough. Good refereeing there. You only have to break the line to finish. And that's what Sadler did with one less flip than Marku. But Marku, after a poor start, came through fast. Well, there's the fan club out again, he's Terry Holland. He's the next two athletes. He's all the support he can get because he's got Mark Felix breathing down his neck. And this is very interesting, though. Those fast from times England, that we're looking at from Mark Innes and Hughes. Felix. Well, Sadler and uh, Jimmy Mark, who couldn't get anywhere near it. I wonder if these two can. Also from England, Terry oh, Holland. I've just got a feeling these two have got one eye on each other. They can let Jay Hughes and Chris Innes have all the points they want. They've just got to try and beat each other here. If Felix can beat Hollands, this race to be Britain's strongest man gets too close to call. But if Hollands can beat Felix, he's got some breathing room. Well, it's Felix who already has gone into the lead here. And it, he just can't make a mistake. Hollands now is trying to play catch up. And, oh, he takes another slip. And this really is putting the pressure on. He's just got his nose in front on turns at the moment, Felix. But Hollands is now starting to get some rhythm going himself. Never mind the time. This is a personal duel between Felix and Hollands. And Hollands has come back strongly. But they are neck and neck. Who's going to get it? It's going to be so close. I think Hollands by a whisker. And not only that, he's taken top spot. And that might have pushed Felix down to third. Now that is very significant. Well, look at this replay here. And you can't see it in the naked eye. It was just by a whisker. Well, Mark, Terry, phenomenally close finish. And Terry, you just got the nod on that one. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that could, can go either way. Um, you know, sometimes it'll go one way, sometimes the other. It was so close, I didn't even know I'd won. A few of the crowd were saying to me, I think you just nudged it, but, you know, it was, it was that close. It was so difficult to call. And Mark, it looks as though Chris Innes may have just split you two and pushed you down into third place. How does that make you feel? Just um, I thought I was, you know, done before Terry, but I would like to see the replay. So you're still, still not convinced uh, no, of the placing? I'm still not convinced now. 
And Terry, how did it feel? You, I mean, you must have sensed this guy right on your shoulder, right the way through. Yeah, I think he actually got ahead of me around the 10 metre mark, and I was thinking, God, like, just keep going, try and catch up with him. Um, I think I just about managed to catch up. But like I said, I mean, I couldn't tell whether I'd won or not. It was, it was that close. Terry Hollands, Chris Innes and Mark Felix separated by just six hundredths of a second. The bad news for Felix, though, is that he was beaten into third. Hollands may just be breathing a little easier now with that four-point cushion. Marku and Sadler neck and neck for third, but there's physical and emotional agony for Laurence Charlet. We're down on the beach next for the gruelling log lift. So to the penultimate event, the overhead log lift down here on the beach. It's a 115 kilogram log and they've got to just get as many repetitions over their head as they possibly can in the time limit. Chris Innes managed five. He'll have been a little disappointed with that. Jay Hughes will have edged past him in seven. These two youngsters continuing to duel away. Anything but a youngster, Mark Westerby at 42, managed eight reps putting the youngsters in their place. From England, Jimmy Marku! Well, Jimmy's certainly got the crowd on his side. He gets crowds with him wherever he goes. Also from England, Darren, Darren Sadler. Sadler! Isn't this interesting? This unofficial battle for third place could not be closer. So, of course, the organisers make sure they go up against each other. Mano a mano. Westerby's eight is the benchmark at the moment. Let's see uh, what happens here. Marku absolutely storming away. He's moved well in front of uh, Sadler. But can he keep it going? That's the question. It's a very, very fast attack from Jimmy. I can't believe this for Marku. After all of the heats and now the finals, and he's still got this kind of energy. Incredible power off the ground. Now, let's not forget it was off the chest in the heats, and he managed, what, 14 reps there, and he's uh, already to double figures nearly. Well, he's certainly in the lead in this competition. He's got two ahead of his competitor, his nearest competitor for that third spot, and Darren Sadler keeps glancing over as if to say, are you doing what I think you're doing? I can't believe I'm seeing this. Darren's putting in a pretty good performance himself, but look at Jimmy fly. He's at 12. Darren, I think, is more or less out of steam here, not Jimmy. And he can really put some daylight between himself and Sadler in this battle for third place. Well, Marky was saying before this heat that his calf had been hurt. You certainly wouldn't know it looking at him, would you? He looks like a man who's absolutely fresh as a daisy. This for 14. Didn't quite make it, but what a performance. 13, unlucky for Darren Sadler, who had to settle for nine. Well, the best ever on this log is 13 by the great Marius Pudzianowski. That's been equaled right here at Britain's Strongest Man by Jimmy Marku. From England, Mark Felix. <laughs> Also from England, Terry Hall. Well, here's the big two. And we're in a situation now, quite simply, where Mark Felix has got a blow by Terry Hollands here to have any chance when they get to the Atlas Stones. And they looked at Jimmy's 13. And that's a tall order. Felix gets off to the flyer. Both of them have got to make sure they get past nine, because that's currently the second. And they, if they get past that, certainly for Hollands, that'll keep him comfortable. Well, on past form, you certainly wouldn't bet on Mark Felix here. Hollands, on all of the regional competitions and previous Britain's Strongest Mans, has been the better log presser. But it's Felix who's attacking this like a man possessed. There's still a little bit of a, a grudge going on with Felix. He really was unhappy about those few hundredths of a second that pushed him down into third place in that last event. You've got to get that bad taste out of your system. And Terry Hollands has levelled it up. He didn't manage to get a ninth on his last push, but he does there, Felix, so he's back in front again. So he's now level with Sadler. Terry Hollands needs that. Oh, he really needed that one to get ahead of Westerby. He's got to get this up for vital points. And he hasn't done it. And they've both run out of gas. Jimmy Mark, who's 13, is going to be safe. This, though, to put him in automatic second spot for Felix. And Hollands is struggling. 
Well, that sets the cat amongst the pigeons. Mark Felix has trimmed back that deficit. Terry Hollands will be very disappointed with eight. Look at Terry's face. He's furious with himself. Just ran out of gas. One event to go. This is really heating up. Look at Felix. Pulls it out of the bag. Well, Mark, you've just pipped this guy one log lift. That uh, keep you in the hunt? Yeah, see, okay, I haven't given up yet. I'm going all the way. It's over till it's over. Terry, were you surprised that Mark beat you on the log lift? Um, yeah, I'm a bit surprised, actually. Um, to be honest, I just totally run out of steam on that. Um, first few lifts felt so easy. It was just like someone had zapped, me, zapped my energy once I got to about five reps. Just had nothing left to give, really. Now, are you going to have enough in the tank for the final competition? Um, yeah, let's hope so. I mean, I think my lead's down to maybe two and a half points now. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very tight and very close down to the wire. So, let's hope I can pull through. And, Mark, you're the guy who's going to be putting the pressure on him. You think you can do it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to go all the way. Um, sometimes as soon as I hit a miss, but this one got to be a hit. Drama then as Hollands fails in one of his favourite events, while Mark Felix, generally a poor overhead presser, steals a march. Nobody got close to Jimmy Mark, who's 13. Just two points separate Hollands from Felix. Could the man from Kent be getting nervous? Would all come down to the final event. Jimmy Mark, who is now a clear third. Well, here it is, the final test, the Atlas Stones. This is the one where it'll decide who takes top slot. Sven, we saw in World's Strongest Man, it came down to the Stones. Mark Felix, Terry Hollands, they're at the top of the tree. Who's going to be there at the end of this? Well, it's going to be really interesting to see Martin. Now it's a real mind game here going on now. And Terry looked a little nervous when I saw him here in the break. And it's going to be very interesting. Now, the setup for these is different from what we saw in the heats. The athletes are going to have to run with these. Who's that going to favour? I really don't know, Martin, because now it's more room for error. So it's going to be very, very hard for the guys now. And, and they really need to keep their focus now, not to lose any seconds with grabbing the stones. Just go in there, lift the stones and get it done with. Well, the wind's picked up, the scene is set, the athletes are ready. Who is going to end on top in Britain's Strongest Man? Stand by for the fireworks here on the beach in Minehead. <laughs> It really is what Strongman is all about. The Atlas Stones, their weights range from 100 to 160 kilograms. You've got to get them on those plinths. Jay Hughes managed four in just under 40 seconds. Chris Innes, another fast time. He too managed four. Watch out for those two. They're the future of this sport. Mark Westerby did all five in 36 seconds. That was fast. So which one of these two is going to be crowned Britain's strongest man? They'll receive that trophy from this fella here, a man who needs no introduction. I remember some of the early competitions, you know, and, and uh, the characters like you know, John Paul Sigmundson, for instance, the Viking, an absolute nutcase. And then you got Willy Kazmaier, you know, a complete nutcase, you know. But what a great man, what a great competitor. They're strong, they're durable, they're competitive. They don't mind getting injured, you know, they break a finger, they say, oh, I've got another three or another four. You break your arm, you say, well, you've got another one, you know what I mean? You put your back out, you say, so what? You know, you just get stuck in and keep going. And listen to Kazma. Apparently they have suffered some type of muscle pull. Strongman is still evolving, you know, and it's great to see the guys competing. And I look at the, to the more natural shaped athlete, you know, the guy who is big boned, you know, he, he's not kind of over muscular in terms of the bodybuilder shape. Terry Holland, yeah, I think he's the boy. He looks the most natural of all. And I don't forget, he's a big boy. Uh, and he's ugly enough. That's the main thing, you know, and uh, no, he's a lovely guy, and I think he, he can win it, yep. There's only going to be one Britain's Strongest Man. Will it be Terry Hollands? Will it be Mark Felix? We'll find out after the break. Will Terry Hollands or will Mark Felix be crowned Britain's Strongest Man? Before we find out, we've got the small matter of third place to be decided. Darren Sadler on the left and Jimmy Marku on the right. Marku currently has a slender lead. 
Also from England, Darren Sadler. Right, one's all smiles, one's all business. Two great competitors. Well, I don't think Sadler will be too confident at the moment. He didn't finish all five in the heats, did he? That was a big surprise. And his height's against him here as well. You can just see it right there, can't you? But he's managed to get the first one up ahead of Marku, who glanced over and saw that and thought, hello, that's not the script that uh, I was expecting. He's going for it here. You just wonder whether that calf injury is slowing Jimmy down now. Darren is really on a roll here. A little bit of a slip there from Darren, but he's still got the lead. He's still got it, and he's really pushing Marku all the way here, and Marku's got some problems. Marku's in big trouble. Well, the wheels are coming off for Jimmy Marku here, because Darren's got all four up, and he's having a go at the fifth. But Jimmy is all over the place on the fourth, and five up for Darren Sadler. And that could be good enough for third place in the final analysis because Jimmy Marku is struggling horribly. He's definitely got to get this fifth stone. If he fails, it's going to come down to his time after four, and I don't think it was very fast. And I don't think he's going to make that fifth stone. Well, we're going to have to check out the stopwatches. But it could be that Darren Sadler has picked Jimmy Marku. Either way, Darren can't be disappointed with this result. He did five stones here, and he didn't do that in the heats. What a battler. Well, another titanic battle. And, Darren, we just heard you've done enough. You've taken third place. How does that make you feel? Fantastic. It's, uh, it's what, I, what I went for in his last event. I'm glad it paid off. But Jimmy's been better than I ever thought he would be this year. He's been absolutely fantastic. And take my hat off to him, you know what I mean? He's really pushed everybody. I think next year will be, you know, up there with the best lads in the world. I'm sure of it. Well, that news for Darren brought a smile to his face. It must be disappointing for you, Jimmy, but your performances through this whole I'm tournament have been remarkable. I'm not disappointed at all. My calves is letting me down, so here you go, that's what happened. Well, Jimmy trying to put a brave face on it, but uh, it's fourth for Jimmy. So we know the uh, minor placings, Felix. now it comes down to top spot. Mark Felix needs five stones and he needs them fast and he definitely needs also to beat England, Terry Hollands. Terry if Hollands Holland. beats Felix, we can forget all the mathematics, all the stopwatches and everything else. Terry will be Britain's strongest man. Well, the way this contest has gone, I just don't know who to bet on here. It could go either way. And didn't Terry have a bit of a breakdown on the stones a couple of years ago? He won't want to be thinking about that now. They're neck and neck on this second stone. All Felix has had a little error of judgment. The pressure got to him. A little bit of tension there. Hollands has managed to get in front. There's stone three. Felix is trailing. His only chance is to beat Terry Hollands, and it's not happening at the moment. One stone between Terry Hollands and the title. And that is that. What a way to be crowned Britain's strongest man. Five stones in under 30 seconds. No doubt who is the governor here in Minehead. A flawless final event for Terry Hollins. As for Mark Felix, he made the mistake of looking over in the first couple of stones, seeing what Terry Hollins was doing, and he paid the price. Well, will he even get this fifth stone on? Well, pride being what it is, he'll want to get that fifth stone. It'll push him down the rankings a little bit if he fails, and it's not looking too clever. He's looking around, he's got a bit of time. I think everybody's willing him to do it, even Terry. They are rivals but there's a lot of respect there as well. And I think that's it. Well, not quite the way Mark Felix would have wanted it to end, but you know what? This was always going to be Terry Holland's hour. Well, that is it right there with the fifth stone going up. Terry Hollands is crowned Britain's strongest man. And nobody can argue that he deserves it. Terry. Congratulations, all five stones up. But the important thing is, you're Britain's strongest man. Oh, it's fantastic. Really pleased with that. I knew I had to put in a good time. Oh, I'm really happy with that, really pleased. It's great. It's been a great competition, I'm really happy. I knew it was going to be tight between me and Mark, and it can go either way. But no, I couldn't be happier with how it's all gone, really. Well, congratulations. Thank well you done. Thank very much, thank you. 
Well, Mark, this is always the most difficult interview to do. Last year, you missed out on the count back. Yes, I did. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling a bit disappointed, but, you know, best one win at the end of the day. Day. A blistering time from Holland. Westerby was strong. Sadler going one better than in qualifying, lifting all five. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terry Holland is Britain's strongest man. Mark Felix, runner-up again. Darren Sadler takes third after a titanic struggle with Jimmy Marku. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Britain's strongest man for 2007, Terry Holland! Well, that's it for another year. Terry Holland's there, delighted with his victory. He saw off stiff competition from the other athletes, but ultimately came through with some blistering performances. Next for these guys is the ultimate challenge, world's strongest man. We'll see you there, but until then, it's goodbye from Minehead, where Terry Holland's is Britain's strongest man, 2007. Coming face to face with a polar bear is just one of the stories from the wildlife photographers in Up Close and Dangerous, and that's next Friday night at 8. In a moment, stay with us for NCIS.